Right. And so all these other, you know, systems of life came in afterwards. Yeah. So what Joel Salatin does, he comes in, he brings chickens in. Recreates it. Recreates it. Sure. And so with that, you're able to do a very, very quick rehabilitation of your land. So we can do this. And this is, his, his land is 500 acres. Mm -hmm. He replanted it. He planted forests on it. He grows grass and he grows meat. Got it. Okay. So those are big elements that we need. For sure. And we can't do that on you know, a small scale. No. Now, but can't do that in your backyard. No, you can't do that. You're not going to have a cattle herd in your backyard. It doesn't make sense. Right. So, what are we going to do? Yeah, what are we going to do? You know what I'm saying? Let's say, let's, right. let's, let's give a hypothetical you know, scenario. So, okay. so, say food is unaffordable right. at the grocery store because of you know, inflation and, and petrol prices and things like this. And just food's unaffordable. People are going to turn to, like Castro did when the wall fell, growing your own food. Mm -hmm. I mean, but the thing is, that's why I wanted you to have you on the show and have you at the Z-Day event. People just need to get it into their consciousness. It's, it's a foreign idea for a lot of people, growing food. You know, it's, we're so accustomed to the convenience of going through a drive through or to the supermarket, right? right? Um, and so uh, this is what I'd like you to talk about is, you know, how easy it is, right? And right. Absolutely feasible and that anybody can grow their own food even if they're living in an apartment, is that possible? Sure. Okay. Please sure. speak on that. Bit. So first of all, and will this be at all like, and, and you know, will this get into kind of what you're going to be going over in the workshop? Absolutely. We've we've cut, touched on on several points, okay. uh, but there's going to be a, a little bit more uh, uh, points drawn in between the topics that we've you know, touched on very briefly tonight. Okay. Um, and so <laughs> we've got I a do very. Do want to say we got about about seven minutes left in the show? Okay, cool. So, so we, 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 we started out broad, big scale, we're going down, we can get food from farms like Joel Salatin, uh, meat, vegetables, we need vegetables, we can't live off meat, right? So first of all, it is possible, right? Of course it is. Well, back in World War II, there were victory gardens. Right. There wasn't, there wasn't enough food, so people started growing it. And suddenly, there wasn't that big much of a, much of a problem with it. Right. Now, in Russia, 60 to 70 percent of their vegetables, for the, the, their potato crop, I think is what it is, uh, comes from their dachniks, which are uh, home plots out in the countryside, mm -hmm. you know, given to every person. And guess how big they are? Quarter of an acre. Quarter of an acre. About. Okay. So, <clears throat> 60 to 70 percent of their potato crop. That's a big figure when you're talking That's about huge. a population for a country. And they're known for living on potatoes. Yes, they are. Potatoes are good. I just planted like over 200 pounds of potatoes myself. It feels uh, good to me. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So th the thing to really remember is that it's in our blood. Right. You know, we are agricultural species. Yeah. You know, civilization started on agriculture. So if, if you're worried about it, you know, just remember that two generations ago, we were all farmers. Right. It, it wasn't that long. Good, good point. And so and the other thing to know is that even the best farmer doesn't necessarily know the outcome when he plants his seeds. And we also she. have access to the internet now, which yes. they did not have a couple generations ago, which will really help you learn. Yes. You know? I, I, I myself have learned things from YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Every it's day. it's an absolute, you know, treasure trove that we have available. So, you know, my topic on Z-Day is going to really be getting getting your foot in the door. Okay. To give give an idea of philosophy mm -hmm. and perspective and reasons why and the approach that we should be taking when we think about designing um, a, a garden and what elements do we need to create a good you know closed closed loop system. Closed loop system. So we have a phone caller right now. I still have another question for you, but uh, let's go to our phone call. We've got Pete. Pete, are you with us, brother? Hey guys, uh, this is an awesome discussion. Very mm -hmm. awesome. I'm growing some vegetables in my backyard. Really, what are the best assortment of vegetables to grow here in Central Texas? I'm sorry, Pete. Uh, to to your to your left. Best vegetables to grow in Texas. Best vegetables to grow in Texas. Okay, so that's a very very good question. Okay, okra. You can't go wrong with okra, and fresh okra is really pretty tasty. Uh, you, you take it right off the plant. You don't let it. Uh, you know, get too old. You have to pick them like second day 
once once they fruit and you know make the little okra stock really tasty tomatoes they can do well uh, as well peppers are a little rough um, yeah I've had a lot of success with cucumbers I've had a lot of success with uh, zucchini uh, it's like summer squash yeah uh, like a, 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 a golden dawn zucchini is a variety that I've used really good stuff Pete um, and then melons, cantaloupe. I've had a lot of good success with cantaloupe. Nice. Now, the, the, the thing that I would advise to anybody growing uh, in their first year is choose, choose like two or three things that you really want and focus on growing those. Uh -huh. I, I made the mistake of trying to grow everything right yeah. away. Yeah. And, and you know, every little type of plant has their own little quirks and characteristics. Sure. So it's really good to, to get your foot in the door with learning a couple right off the bat. You know, the idea that I had is like, if you could get, you know, your community, your neighbors uh, uh, involved, each of you could pick a few different items to work on and you get a little bit of a, you know, a community garden essentially going on, on with, but it's different gardens and they're kind of rotating and sharing and trading crop. Yeah. And so another thing that I want to make sure I touch on while we still have time is that if you own a house, or you're going to be in a house for you know five years. Uh huh. Plant blackberries. Really? Yes. Now you, you can get blackberries for dirt cheap. Two year old blackberries for like three fifty a piece. Buy ten blackberry plants. Uh, I get the thorned variety because it helps deter birds. But you know if you, if you don't want that, you can get thornless varieties as well. They grow well in alkaline clay soils that we have in Texas, mm -hmm. and they're a perennial plant. And this is a big, important topic, is plants that don't require replanting every year. That's, that's really key in, yeah. in getting a sustainable generative food system, is when we get uh, 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 orchards in place or gardens in place, that take care of themselves. Oh yeah! You you you, you like put that. in a, a, a effort. You Less put in labor. energy. You know, and and they're what we call front end heavy investments. You you invest in in the 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 blackberries, and you invest in the weed blocker cloth, and the time and the labor and all this. And it might feel like a lot, but once you're done, you just you just make sure it gets its water every week. Sure. You get get a timer for your water system. Nice. And then you're done. And then every year you're going to have blackberries. Now, are you going to be touching on, um, you know, either as far as design goes, doing raised beds as opposed to non-raised beds, um, or, you know what I'm saying? Well, yes, absolutely. Different design possibilities. And Th there's, there's so many different design possibilities. Sure. And, you know, depending on what you want to go for, um, I, I, there is no hard and fast method. Sure. You know, okay, the other thing to know is that there is no right and no wrong way to farm. A really? lot of are you sure about that? <laughs> Doesn't it depend on there, there's if good you're, ideas. If you're not getting food, that's a wrong way. <laughs> well, there's good ideas and there's bad ideas. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but generally speaking, genetic you, engineering. That's a bad idea. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, so y you know, experts will have different perspectives on things, and you know, my coworker Mike, we 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 talk about what we're going to do every year, and we have different ideas. Does right. that mean? He's right and I'm wrong, or vice versa. No, we just like, well, we want to try this, so we'll try a little bit of both. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, absolutely. Ariel, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Great job. Thanks, sir. And we're looking forward to you on Saturday. I'm looking forward to it. I hope to see you guys out there. Everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in to the show today. Uh, uh, one note I do want to say, um, uh, if you do wish to uh, contribute and walk away with some t-shirts and some DVDs, bring cash. Bring cash. That's all I wanted to say about that. Okay, so my name is Tyson Austin Everly. You're watching Zeitgeist Live. Tune in every week, Wednesday nights, channel 16, 10 to 11 o'clock. Or you can catch us at our, uh, at our uh, website, which is zeitgeistlive.tv. And uh, yeah, so far, my name is Tyson. This is Ariel, and we out. Mwah!